Hi guys, welcome back um, and welcome to the first of our weekly Friday Faves and Fails. Just a little bit of context because this is kind of unusual in the current YouTube landscape. Once upon a time, Sam Schumann, I remember, used to do these every single week and it was kind of a popular thing, a weekly Faves video. Um, what worked and what didn't work. And the reason I'm doing it now, when it's not quite so common, is specifically for me. I want to get back into um, sharing what I enjoy using. I want to get back into using things not just to be on camera. And if I know every single week I have committed to talk about some beauty stuff, then it will encourage me to actually use some beauty stuff that week. As I was applying my makeup this morning, I was like, so a few days ago, I did my um, mascara review, which you may have seen. I reviewed the new Sky High mascara and compared it with the original Maybelline Lash Sensational. I was putting makeup on specifically to make that video and I'm like, ugh, every time I put foundation on these days, everything just looks dry and horrible and I hate everything. And I just don't enjoy makeup anymore. And I was putting this makeup on and thinking, maybe this is not gonna work. Maybe committing to this is actually not a good idea because I don't think makeup looks better on me anymore. And then a few hours in, because I tend to put makeup on film and take it off in recent months um, since lockdown. And a few hours in, I looked in the mirror and was like, wow, this looks really great. This actually looks way better than when I first put it on. And I'm remembering this used to be a thing it needs to settle on this oily face. It looks dry and puffy in the morning. It's never quite as nice. And then a few hours later, I'm like, this is it. This is the sweet spot for makeup. And just in that moment, I thought, there are so many things I want to retry because I've been so quick to judge them when I've needed them to work immediately through lockdown. Because it's not just been like, I'm putting on makeup to go somewhere. I'm putting on makeup to go to work. It's been things that I'm like, well, I need it to look good on camera in five minutes when I film. And that's not necessarily the real world. So I put my makeup on this morning and I was using some different primers and I applied things with my fingers like I used to. And I thought, yeah, this is, this is why I used to love it. So very long-winded explanation as to why I wanna do this every single week. I don't know whether or not you guys are gonna to wanna to see it every week, but, and I promise we won't do this whole long intro review, but I think I, I'm gonna enjoy it. I have quite a few things that I want to talk about today. So I'm going to kick off with one of the things that I pulled out today that I haven't used in ages, but I always loved, and it's the Bobbi Brown Correctors. Um, these were sent to me a million years ago. I'm certain they are not supposed to be continued to be used now. What is the thing? It usually will tell me. Okay, I can't see anything about when this is good too. Let's just pretend that means it's good forever. It still smells totally fine. It's, the texture is exactly the same. I don't care. I'm still going to continue to use it because these are expensive products. So I use Porcelain Peach, I believe. Yes. Porcelain Peach I use on my redness. So that's kind of like a, a corrector here and here where I've got some breakouts, where I've got like redness around my nose. I use this colour and I use Light Bisque, which is this pinky color, under my eyes. Now, it might seem counterintuitive for someone who's starting to see in fine lines and saying that her skin is really dehydrated and dry and every time I put something on it's like, ugh, everything kind of settles and is horrible, because this is a thick, creamy consistency. I don't know how this works, but I've always said this about these products. You put them on, it, you have to blend them with your fingers. It just works best that way. You blend them kind of, it's amazing. They just blend into your skin. They are heavy coverage if you want them to be, but I kind of just feather them out and they're just so beautiful. They really are. I think there are certain things that I'm prepared to spend money on and concealer these days, I just feel like nothing works. And then I use this and I'm like, no, those concealers that I'm trying don't work. So if you can recommend to me a low cost version, like a creamy concealer that you feel would do the same thing. It's kind of like a dry cream because it does, it doesn't sink in. It's not like a thick, thick, it's more, I can't even describe it, you know? It's not balmy, it's not really a cream. It's like, um, it must be drier because it just doesn't settle in that same way. So if you can recommend something that you really like, you feel doesn't settle into lines, 
that is lower cost, please let me know because I'm all about the cream concealers now. Um, something I've been using tons basically since I bought it, I haven't not used it, is the Lash Sensational Mascara Primer. Now, I mentioned in Wednesday's video when I was um, comparing the Sky High one, I said I didn't think, I didn't think the primer would work well with the Sky High Mascara because I thought that the Sky High didn't, like it wasn't, God, I'm horrible at describing things today. It wasn't a firm enough brush, it didn't have enough kind of grip and I couldn't um, kind of move it over the top of lashes that already had something on it. It was just kind of too flexible and bendy. So what I did, I put the primer on and before it totally dried, I put on the Sky High. I love this. I actually think I prefer this to um, when I have my regular Lash Sensational on, which is a lot to say because that is my absolute favorite. That primer though can make pretty much any mascara amazing. So. I, I wasn't into primers. You can absolutely not see any white um, once you actually put your black mascara on. It's not difficult to cover at all. It's not like your old L'Oreal white primer. This is a different animal um, and I really, really love it. Right, what other makeup things? Oh, I had this on today. A couple of times this week I've used it and thought, actually, I think I used the truffle one of these more when I first got them and I was like, mm, these are a bit blah, not really into it. These are the little, I forget what they're called because it's not on here anywhere, but these kind of little mini palettes from Elf. So this one is Cream and Sugar, and I've basically only got this colour and this colour on my eyes today. The reason that I love this so much is because I always use a dark powder as my liner these days. And so I really like a little palette that's got a very pale colour in it and a very dark colour in it. And that's kind of difficult to find, especially in something that's like a little quad like this. And if you have got a very dark colour, often it's not um, cool enough. This is warm, but it's dark enough to get away with. Um, and this is a beautiful colour. It's what I've got on my eyes today. I don't know if it's showing up all that well on camera, but I swear it's like, it looks like it glistens. It's incredible. Absolutely amazing. I've barely used these other two, but I kind of want to throw that in there as a, this is a really nice little palette for just a little bit of shadow. I mean, I could use the other two for a little bit of kind of contour in the eye, but it's a bit warm for my taste. Um, I would love this just for those two, because that's just an eye in a palette for me. Then I just need my mascara. Okay, um, one last thing that's not really makeup, but kind of is, is this OPI Gel Break. I spoke about this on Instagram this week. Um, I actually have this and another product that I'm gonna show you, which were given to me as part of an Instagram ad that I did, but they gave me a voucher and I could pick what I wanted. So I did choose this for myself. It wasn't kind of thrust upon me. It was what you wanna get and recommend. Um, I hadn't tried this before. As soon as I tried it, I was like, this is exactly what I wanted it to be. I wanted to get the Tinted Nail Envy, but I actually ended up getting this because I couldn't find the Tinted Nail Envy. This is called Gel Break. The color I have is too tantalizing. And my nails were so, so thin, just kind of bendy and sensitive because I picked off all my acrylics and done all of the things I wasn't supposed to do, filed them down. Um, I was just like a bad nail person. Um, and I just had such, such sensitive nails throughout the entire move. I was painting, I was hammering things, I was moving things. I actually got to the point where my nails were kind of, they felt bruised and the ends of my nails were so, so sore. And I put this on and it felt like I was putting on like a layer of soothing cream on sensitive skin. It was incredible. I've never known anything like this with nail polish before, but almost the minute it went onto my nail, amazing. Now I have heard this before because whenever I've taken off my nail polish in the past and left it for like more than 12 hours, my nails get sore. And I read about this and it's something to do with that um, kind of protective layer of the nail. It's not there anymore and it's become sensitive because it's used to being covered up constantly. So that's not specific to um, having had like gels or acrylics. That's something that I've experienced before, but I've never had something that I've then put on those sensitive nails that's been like instant relief. Absolutely amazing. So I've got it on today with some Sesh Feet top coat. It's not kind of super fancy. It's just like a sheer wash of color, but more than anything, I feel like it's treating my nails and um, it just makes them feel nicer 
while they're kind of repairing themselves. The other thing that was sent to me as part of that campaign that I did uh, was this, Aromatherapy Associates Shower Oil, and I got the De-Stressed Calm and Focus. I have used Aromatherapy Associates bath oils on and off for years. They are so incredibly expensive, but I've always said, just literally just a capful in a very, very hot bath, I leave the bathroom door open, it scents the entire of the upstairs. It's an incredibly strong and effective oil um, and the scent totally helps me go to sleep. I'm thinking of the deep relax. Love that so much. You can use that in the shower. You can just kind of put it on your body before you get into the shower, but it's a very expensive shower oil if you're using it that way. I mean, I suppose it's no different really. It's just expensive all round, but it's an expensive way of doing it. This, you get way more for your money. This is about half the price of the little ones for the bath oil. Um, and I only use, I've used this a couple of times, I use the tiniest, tiniest amount, kind of step away from the water, put it kind of this area. I'm not using it on my legs and things. This is precious, precious oil. Um, I'm just really using it kind of for the top half of my body and for the scent. So at nighttime, when I'm now having a shower, which is exciting, I was never a shower person, We've got a shower in our um, ensuite and it's an amazing shower. My mum told me it was an amazing shower. If you're not familiar with this situation, <laughs> you need to go and watch my vlogs. Um, but it is an amazing shower and it's just kind of, it feels extra bougie. So now I open the ensuite door, the scent goes into the bedroom. And again, it's just super, super chill out kind of scent. Um, Again, I just really, really like the de-stress one. And if you are thinking of getting something from our own therapy associates, I think this is the way to go because it's already expensive, but this way it is a little bit more cost effective. I don't know if it's still valid, but they did give me a 20% coupon code. Again, I'm not being paid to talk about this, but they did give me a 20% coupon code. So if I've still got it and if it's still valid, I'll leave it below in case you're interested, but you know, get it from wherever you want. I just think that's really, really great. Um, right, I've got one thing that I wanted to talk about that was a fail. This was also sent to me middle of last year, I want to say, and I've never used it. I swatched it when they first sent it to me, and I was like, I don't understand. Never really appealed. Um, someone just walked past carrying, like, the biggest thing of beer I've ever seen in my life. Um, it just didn't appeal at all. And so this week, because I've been playing with different makeup, I've been playing with primers because I thought that would help with the whole dehydration and the foundation not looking so great. I thought, well, this is fancy. This is hourglass. This is probably going to be amazing. It's called the Veil Mineral Primer Oil Free Broad Spectrum SPF 15. I don't know if this comes in different colours, but this is blue. Um, I'll just put a very small, not so small amount. I will put some and then get the rest on the table, on my hand, and then we're gonna just see. I think the dog is barking at the man with all the beer. So you can kind of see that it's a little bit blue like that. I'm just gonna, I put this on my face, my entire face, yesterday, the day before, and I honest to God couldn't believe. I looked, I fully blue. Can you see that? I get that it's probably supposed to be like luminous and beautiful, but it left a fully blue cast. I don't even know if that's like, showing up. It's so snowy today. It's really messing with the light on my camera. But can you like see how, if I move out of the way, will it show you how snowy it is in the mud garden? Will it? Yes. All of this white is like, camera does not want to deal with it. Um, Fully, fully blue. It's the craziest thing. You can't really see it. Can you see kind of even there? I've rubbed it away as much as I can. I can see that it's got like an iridescence to it. So I get the point, but I also kind of don't because who wants blue on their face? I don't think that's flattering to very many people. So I don't know whether or not that's one of many colors that are available or what, what the idea is, but it's not for me. And I didn't like the texture. It's very, very greasy. It's that silicone-y, but super greasy feeling. Not into it at all. I want to talk briefly about my switch. I got a switch light before Christmas. I bought Animal Crossing in the original lockdown when I was furloughed. I was like, right, I'm buying Animal Crossing. People are going crazy about it. I love Animal Crossing. It's not to do with, like, I know people kind of meet up with each other and stuff, and that's great, 
But for me, it's like the monotony of like, I plant flowers, I'm trying to crossbreed these flowers into different colors and put them in different areas on my island. And every day I'm watering these flowers, I'm moving these flowers around. This is almost the entire thing that I'm doing now. Cause I restarted my island, I was using it on Milo's uh, Switch and then he got really into Fortnite and I could never play. So I ended up buying my own Switch Lite, which I would recommend, but I will say it's only an extra hundred pounds to get the full Switch. And if you've only got one, I still would say get the full Switch. Get the big original Switch because it's nice to be able to play it on a TV. It's nice to be able to do the multiplayer stuff. All of the games are the same price for the Switch Lite. It absolutely, in my opinion, is worth paying the extra for the larger one. Even if you think you're only gonna play it handheld ever, you've always got that option. Um, but yeah, I start all over again on my own and I do just really, really love it. It's a complete switch off. Unlike when I would play The Sims, which I still love, but I haven't played for a while. I'm not on my computer. Like if I'm playing The Sims, something might pop up. Something might come to mind. Oh, I just need to search this. I just need to Google this. I, this, I can't do anything else on this, but play a game and be completely immersed, total escapism. I'm not halfway through playing it going, oh, I'll just reply to this email or I'm just, when I really want proper downtime, this is this is how I'm getting it right now. Um, and I've got two snacky type things that I want to mention, food and drink items. I, we could talk all day. We could do one of these all on food and drink items, but um, currently obsessed with two things. One is Chipotle paste. And this is all because of HelloFresh. I now make this thing on the regular that's like, um, it's, well, I suppose it is vegetarian without really even feeling like you're making a vegetarian dress, but it's halloumi tacos. They are incredible. It's like black beans, halloumi, um, tomato paste. You can get the recipe on HelloFresh even if you don't subscribe to the service. All the recipes are online. Um, and chipotle paste. I finally found it in the shop and I thought, Lee is never gonna find this when I send him back for it. Um, so I've bought like four jars of it. And I'm making as many things Chipotle as possible. I've currently got some mixed beans, um, peppers and onions with Chipotle and tomato paste in this like congealed thing in the fridge that I'm about to put on some southern fried oven chips and have with as much sour cream as I can possibly consume. That is gonna be my lunch. But Chipotle paste, guys, Chipotle paste. I was always like chili, when you put chili, in something to make it Mexican-y, because I, I love, you know, not real Mexican food, but you know, our butchered version of Mexican food, I love. May I present to you, maybe I was the only one that didn't know about this, but love. Also mix it with a little bit of mayonnaise, really nice too. And Vimto, this is kind of representative, not only of Vimto, but just sugary drinks in general. I'm trying to wean myself off energy drinks. I was drinking them constantly, several times a day. I don't do that anymore. I will have the occasional, my favorite is Dr. Monster. It's the yellow one with the black that looks a bit like a Boddington's can. Not great to drink on a Teams meeting with uh, a lot of older men who remember Boddington's cans. It definitely is a bad look. Um, but generally sugary drinks. So I've started drinking regular Coke again, rather than Diet Coke. I've started drinking Vimto, which to me always reminds me of Burger Bands. Burger van, Vimto, always. It's always what I would get from a burger van. Someone else might get Daniel Lani Burdock, Dr. Pepper, Vimto. Um, and so now when I want kind of like a pick-me-up and I don't want to make a coffee, it's a sugary drink. Again, not constantly, maybe not even every day, but I have developed a taste for them again. Once upon a time, I lived, I remember after I had Milo, I was just living on sour cream, Pringles, toffee butter kissed popcorn, the dream, and full fat Coke for quite a while. Like a couple of months after I had Milo, I feel like I just became a mixture of those three things. Anyway, oh, I do also quickly want to mention um, two things that I've been watching TV wise, uh, cause I was asking what kind of things people wanted to see in the weekly favorites and this came up. So I'm re-watching Working Moms on Netflix because there's gonna be a new season very, very soon. If you haven't seen Working Moms, you need to watch it now more than ever because if you feel like you are failing as a parent, which I think most of us do, and if you don't, all of your friends probably hate you. 
Um, if you feel that way, you need to watch this. It's a very, very candid, real look at motherhood and um, working moms. But it's like they, there's a woman that gets um, pregnant with her third child. She's doing well. There's no reason for it per se, but she considers an abortion quite seriously. That was an amazing storyline. Um, just real topics that you don't see on TV very often. And I think we're on season four now. It's really, really great. And there's not that many episodes per season, so you can blow through that probably before the next one comes out. The other one we're watching, Lee and I, is The Americans. We like to have a series on the go that we both like that is long. So if ever we're like, what shall we watch? We don't want to waste like 45 minutes scrolling through things and deciding. We have that show to fall back on. And that is our show right now. Loads of seasons of that. It's got Matthew Reese from Brothers and Sisters, who, by the way, is Welsh. Look it up online. There's a video of him on YouTube talking in his real accent, and it blew my mind. Kevin from Brothers and Sisters is full on Welsh. And Kerry Russell, who was in the original Waitress film. I think, oh, she was also in Solo, maybe? Not loads of stuff that I've seen, but I know of Kerry Russell. Um, and they are a couple. They're Americans. They're not Americans. They're Russian spies. Uh, posing as Americans and they've lived together and been married for years and years. They have children. They are, it's the living a fake life. That is their cover. And so they are married, but they're not really married, you know, but they've got children who for all intents and purposes think that they are a regular American couple. It's really, really interesting. Um, and it's a bit raunchy. It's got that, again, that romance anchoring the whole show that I always need, but it's also um, quite interesting historically. Um, it's all set in the 80s. It's really good. I also bought a leotard after watching the first episode because I was like, I already wanted one because Bonnie Bennett wore it in the 90s prison world in Vampire Diaries, which also, by the way, is back on Netflix. <sighs> the people have spoken, if that's not proof that democracy wins. Um, but yeah, Kerry Russell in that body suit, I was like, it's happening. But I did buy a leotard, not a body suit, so that it wouldn't have the press studs at the crotch. That's a tip for you if you hate them too. Um, I'm also starting, or by the time you see this, will have started a book club on Instagram. Every Tuesday at 12 o'clock, we're going to meet and talk about the book that we've been reading or listening to that week. I am going to try and do this weekly. It might end up being bi-weekly, depending on what people request. Um, but I will leave the link to the first IG live that will go up as an IGTV for you to look at if you're interested in that, because I do want to use up some of my Audible credits. I never stopped subscribing to Audible, but after quarantine or after we went home from work, um, we went into lockdown, I just didn't really use Audible anymore. So yeah, uh, I want to use up some of these credits and I want to start listening to books again. Don't have the bandwidth to actually read one, but it's all the same thing. So that's it. Um, thank you for watching. Let me know how you've enjoyed this, what you would like to see in the future, if you would like to see a different format or a change of any kind. And as always, if there's anything specific you would like to see me review or compare for Wednesday's videos, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you on Sunday with a completely random video. Bye.